Hello and welcome back or welcome to the Knitting Page podcast. My name is Paige and I'm the face behind the Knitting Page. And here's just a little spot on the internet where I like to share my thoughts, feelings, sometimes chaotic energy about knitting. So let me know what you're working on in the comments below. Always interested to find out new patterns, new, new, um, new yarns, and just kind of connect and see what other people are working on. Um, I oftentimes think if you're willing to dedicate like so much time, energy, and money into a project is probably something that like you are quite passionate about and that you also like you would want to love that finished object because why else would you spend all that time, energy, and money creating something? So let me know below what you're working on and if you are on the other socials, I should say, I'm also on Instagram and you bleh. Instagram and Ravelry at the knitting page and I definitely post the most frequently on Instagram But I'm trying to get better at posting on YouTube because I think it's so fun to knit and listen to other podcasters So yeah, here's me doing my thing giving it a whirl So today's podcast is actually not a podcast episode where I'm gonna go through finished objects and whips and new yarn today's podcaster episode is going to be about my summer 2023 knitting plans. So I'm finishing up teacher's college here at Queen's University in Canada and which means right now I don't have a job. Well actually that's a lie. I do have a part-time research job online but for the most part I have a lot of free time and I also like to knit during class because I find that it helps that busy part of my brain stay occupied and allows that like slower thinking part of my brain to focus on what my professors are saying and teachers college is way less about copying notes and regurgitating information as it is about like absorbing information having discussions getting new ideas and like a lot more big picture things than find specific details that you have to articulate on a test so that means that the type of school i'm in makes it really nice to like knit during class because I don't have to take notes because that's not reflective like taking notes isn't reflective of how I'm doing as as a student and also I find that it doesn't like drastically impact my teaching practice and that if there is something that I want to record I obviously take the time to record it down usually in like my notes app on my phone or computer so that I do have that idea and usually it's like a resource um, to use later but anyways I digress that being said I have a lot of knitting time this July because I'm still in class till the end of July so my list is quite long and for August I have the month of August totally off from school and before I start my teaching job in at the end of August beginning of September so I have a lot of free time compared to how I picture my free time to be in the fall so I'm just like leaning in on my chaotic knitting energy and allowing myself to kind of like dream big put everything down and kind of see what I can accomplish because I've been really like my knitting mojo is really high in the summer for some reason. I don't know. I love summer knits. Um, and yeah, I'm just leaning into that energy and allowing myself to go there, create big lists and kind of see how much I can tackle. Of course, going to have grace and, and compassion with myself if I don't end up tackling the 13 items on my summer 2023 knitting list. But there's a lot and I do have a lot of time on my hands. So I'm just kind of like, we'll see what what I can get done and I think a lot of these pieces are great summer knits but I also think that they'll be great pieces year round um I always find schools are like one room's hot one room's freezing cold and there's a very uneven distribution of temperature so sometimes you want to have that cozy sweater but then you also want to have like a, a, a tank top or a t-shirt on underneath when you go into a new room that's ridiculously hot so yeah Knitting pieces, I like them year round. I oftentimes wear like my camis from last summer underneath like a t-shirt or a cardigan like throughout this past winter anyways. So I do really like the summer pieces because I find that they, they fly by really, really quickly. And I also find that I'm not like the biggest sweater girl, but that may change in the future. So anyways, let's get started on what's on my summer 2023 knitting list. And before I begin, this is what I'm wearing is the Hemingway Halter. Yes, the Hemingway Halter Top by Tiffany, who is made at Linden on Instagram. And this was a test knit, test knit for her. And it's made to match the Hemingway shorts by the knitting booth, who is, or by Laura, who's the knitting booth on Instagram. And this piece, I did talk about it in my last podcast, but 
it is super size inclusive. There's so many customizations that you can make in terms of like finding the perfect fit for your body. Um, and I think it's just like such a fun summer piece. And I was surprised how much I enjoyed how this like variegated yarn knitted up. But anyways, this is a recent finished object and it is something that I really love. So let's get started on what I'm planning to knit this summer. So my computer is just over here and that's where I have my notes. So the first three objects or first three patterns that I have planned are non-negotiable because they are test knits. So the first pattern that I'm going to be knitting is the Wrap It Top by Katarina, who is Knitterina on Instagram. And here is the swatch. So this is knit in Holstgarn Coast in the colorway Marsh. And Holstgarn Coast is a cotton and merino blend, which is 55% wool and 45% cotton. And I honestly love this swatch. I love this swatch. Love this yarn so, so much. I find it's like this super soft, delicate fabric. And I cannot wait to have this top in my wardrobe. So I have started it. Here it is. <laughs> it doesn't really look like a top, but it is. So wrap it top, as you can guess, has a wrap in it. And this is a strapless top. Well, it has options for straps, um, but in, in her sample, she made it strapless. And it has these nice, beautiful... Um, double knitted, not double knitted, but like you... You knit, I don't know how to call this, but like, I guess like a, a tube, a flat tube that you knit the straps on. So it's like nice and thick and oh, it is so, so soft. And then you have the band top part that covers your chest. Um, but I think, yeah, it just looks very beautiful, elegant, feminine. Um, and I, I, I'm really digging greens, as you'll kind of see. There's a few more other green projects coming up. But yeah, this is this top I think will be probably not the most teacher appropriate, but I like really nice to like go out for dinner and just I think it's like a nice top you can dress up or you could also throw on a pair of like cute jean cutoffs and like wear it casual. But my plan is to get those like removable strap things that you get on like swimsuits or like strapless bras so that I can have the option of wearing this with or without straps. But yeah, I have to knit some very long straps, which take I double the amount of time is if it was just only one-sided fabric because you have to knit both sides although I am much faster at knitting than I am purling so probably not double the amount of time but a little bit more than if it was just um like plain stockinette and not have the side but I do love this strap and I think it's it's nice to not have it to curl and you know all that jazz um but yeah so this top is on my summer 2023 knitting plans and it has to get done because it's a test knit and I'm gonna kind of like chunk it up my plans into sections so like I would like to finish the strap and start the the top part by the end of this week and then finish the top and start the second strap or band I guess wrap band by the end of next the following week and then finish up this strap by the final week of the test knit um just to kind of break it up, I am, as you'll see, like a multiple whip person. I never knit monogamously unless I'm like on a trip and I only bring one project. But for the most part, I like to have a variety of needle sizes on the go, patterns on the go. Like I usually always have to have a stockinette piece because it's just something that I find super nice. A stockinette in the round I find is like so wonderful, but I also do love texture and pattern, which none of these projects are like super texture heavy um but I do like to have a variety of, of the, a variety of projects on the go so the next pattern that I have is the Celine top by Emma's Knits on Instagram made by Emma um and it is this super cute fun this is like the most texture fun pattern I have I will show it to you because it's quite quite accomplished so I guess quite far. So this is the Celine top. This is also a test knit. 
Um, and I am holding line, tin line by Sandus Garn with drops alpaca silk in like very similar colors to get this wonderful purple color. And so as you can see, it has like this nice like stair step pattern on it. And I think it is quite, quite lovely. Yeah. And so I'm planning to it a little longer than the pattern calls for because I want to be able to wear this teaching and I just, I don't want to have to have my, my midriff showing. Um, yeah, so it's knit, you knit the body first. I also just like the fabric of this is so, so soft. Um, and then there's also a lot of variety in the pattern. Um, so like you can change whether to have like waist decreases, which I personally chose because I, I haven't had a project with waist decreases before and I'm really curious to know how it will work. Sometimes I struggle with like the billowiness of the stomach area of tops when like it's made to fit your bust measure, like with negative ease summer tops that are made to fit your bust measurement, but then it's like slightly awkwardly baggy, but also awkwardly tight in the torso area instead of like, like an oversized boxy fit, like always looks good. But like sometimes those negative ease tops, I feel like it's like tight here and then it's like awkwardly loose in my stomach. Um, so I'm excited to try the waist decreases. And then she also gives options for different style of straps. So I'm gonna do the large, wide straps because I want to be able to wear it with a bra um but she also gets options for like thin i-cord straps which yeah totally awesome also this is knit on I had to size up uh needles to get gauge but I'm knitting it on 4.5 millimeter needles and it is just knitting whoops there we go it is just knitting up so so quickly and yeah so this one as you can see is going to be done super quick I'm hoping to finish it by the end of this week slash middle of this week and I think it'll be super nice for for the summer and like I know alpaca isn't like a summer fiber but I think holding it with tin line which is a linen cotton and viscose blend and having the silk with the alpaca silk does make for a really nice fiber and yeah I'm curious to see like how hot I'll get in it but it is so so soft I like yeah I'm obsessed with how soft it is. I just always want to like go over and touch it because it's, yeah, it's just so soft. So pattern number two. Yes. Pattern number two. Okay. Pattern number three is the Merle T designed by Knitting Deer. And this is like a nice boxy t-shirt and it's also a test knit. Um, <laughs> so I've started it. Oh, let me show you the swatch because I think the swatch does a better job at showcasing the pattern than how far I've gotten knitting. So this is like a boxy t-shirt that has these nice pearl ridge details on it to add like some very subtle stripes. And so I swatched, at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do the, like a, a contrast color if I want to just do a, a singular color and just have like the subtle pearl bumps be uh, just like a variety in the plain stockinette. But I did decide, well, I bought, so I ordered this yarn, which is called Hempathy from La Bobanus. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it is a brick and mortar shop in Montreal, Canada. Um, and this is, I was like scrolling and I want to find something that, because I don't have a lot of DK in my stash. And I also, I don't have a lot of, like I have, some camisole quantities but I don't have enough for like a t-shirt or like a full sweater um so I was in the market to get some new yarn and I wanted to try something I think she is holding I think she has like a cotton in the pattern so I was like okay I want it I wanted to have like some nice drape for the summer and to be breathable and I I didn't want I want to stay away from wool um so I was looking at kind of different options and I was like oh maybe like linen maybe cotton, maybe like a blend, but then I came across Hempathy. And here's the ball. And this is a cotton, hemp, and modal blend. Um, and this is the colorway Snow Leopard. So that's my main color. And then I got the colorway Touchstone 
which is like this nice gray blue. And I was like, I wasn't a hundred percent sure if I wanted the contrast color, but you only need one ball. And I was like, oh, I'll get it. And like, if I don't use it, I can make like a kerchief or like some, some, uh, accessory. But I honestly adore the contrast. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do it with, with the nice like gray blue stripes. And I think it will fit like the aesthetic. I'm kind of all over the place in terms of summer aesthetics, but I think that'll be super nice. So <laughs> here's what I have so far. It is a drop shoulder. So if you've knit a drop shoulder before, you know, you start with typically the nice square of a back and then you pick up for the, the front and the sleeves and all that jazz later. And then, so yeah, that's all I have. But I honestly, the fabric is really, really nice. Um, I think it'll be super light and summer appropriate but then I also think that it'll be just a nice shirt to wear year round and I I like the the neutral with that like blues is something that I'm always I've always been drawn to so that's project number three knitting plan number four is also in the works if I can find it yes this is the Talia cardigan which is from San Niskarn's summer lookbook for 2023 So this is knit in line in the colorway putty or kit. I've seen it listed both ways. Um, yeah, just like a nice neutral. Again, line is a linen, cotton, and viscose blend. I talk about that more in my previous podcast about <laughs> why I'm knitting it. Um, but yeah, so like to finish that up. That one's kind of like on the back burner a bit. Um, I knit on it every once in a while, but... It has been so hot. I don't really even think it's appropriate for like a nice uh, summer summer yarn cardigan right now because it's like, well, for Canada, it's like in the 30s um, with the humidity and I'm a sweaty gal. So haven't really been working on that, but it's something that I think will be super nice for dresses and all that jazz. So Talia cardigan number four on the plans. Number five is yarn. <laughs> it's been talked about in a decent number of my podcasts. But it is for the Tide Loop Tea by Other Loops. So I ordered Trio 2 by Isiger in the colorway Frost to then hold with Alpaca 1 in the colorway 11, I believe. Yes. And so these are the yarns that are called for in the pattern. And yeah, it was expensive, but I think it'll be such a cute t-shirt. I just... Yeah, I think once I finish, like once I finish a couple of these test knits, I think I will I will cast it on, um, but I think I will cast on a different project that I'll get to later first because I'm craving some of that plain stockinette, um, and I don't currently have any projects with just plain in the round stockinette. I've got some with back and forth stockinette, but I find purling sometimes hurts my fingers. So, yeah. Anyways. The Tide Loop Tea. This is getting cast on and hopefully finished this summer. Um, yeah, I think it'll be super, super nice. Um, and yeah, this kind of strikes me as more as like a summery spring garment than fall and winter, but we'll see what, what I end up wearing it with um, as I, once I finish it and have it in my wardrobe. Okay, number six is the Square Neck Camisole by Garno Slick. Garno Slick, I think. Yes. And I'm knitting this in Knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway soil. And <laughs> it's not very far along. <laughs> so here it is. Here's my whip. It is a strap. Yeah, this, this has been slow. I cast it on a while ago. I don't know what it is with straps, but I just, I don't like knitting them. So yeah. And like, I mean, I, <laughs> I applied for all those test knits and then I was like found out I got into them. And so this has kind of gone to the back burner, but it's a piece that I would like to have. And I think this will be like a great year round piece. Um, and yeah, little fun fact about me is that I did a whole bunch of soil research for my undergrad. Um, and we have like NSERC is what it's called in Canada for like grants and the National Science Engineering Research Committee. But yeah, I had research positions that were NSERC uh, awards. And so 
and they were all in soil and so like yeah the colorway soil was like oh that's so perfect um because yeah i can nerd out about soil for longer than most people would probably want to hear so we'll see how this how this progresses you know my next podcast that come that will come out you can check back in and kind of see where where that's at but yeah square neck camisole is on the tenant list this summer okay number seven is my first day of school top that i'm hoping to knit this summer so i am knitting camisole number seven and again we're in like the infant stage of this garment um but my goals for last week were to finish two whips that i had on the go and to start this um so i achieved that goal and this is knit in juniper moon by um no sorry this is knit in finley by juniper moon which is a merino and silk lace it's like a heavy lace um weight a heavy lace weight yarn um honestly i feel like it's bordering like light fingering like kfo um like yeah knitting for olives all of their lace or light fingering i feel like it's very similar um and this is in the colorway chartreuse so just this nice pale green color i think it'll be quite beautiful um yeah this this will be the nice like slow whip uh, that'll just kind of grow through the summer. I don't have to have it done until the beginning of September, but I do, I, I want to start it now so that I could make progress on it. Okay. Project number eight is the camisole number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Oh, I should also mention that the camisole number seven was also, is also designed by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Yeah, camisole number nine by my favorite things knitwear i don't currently have the yarn but i uh this past weekend was canada day and so a lot of canadian yarn shops were having canada day sales so i ended up purchasing some knitting for all of cotton merino in the colorway dusty artichoke and dusty banana um with plans of knitting camisole number nine in one of those colors um a little aside but my favorite color is yellow and i don't currently have a yellow knit because i don't think it's like the most wearable color for me, but I do love it. And that dusty banana color is like yellow, but almost a neutral. Um, so I was like, oh, they have enough in stock. It's on sale. I'll pick some up. And I've been, I haven't knit in the cotton merino yet, but I've been really wanting to try to, to knit it. And I do have some in stash, but I really wanted it the Barbro blouse with it, but it, the pattern hasn't come out yet. Um, so it's just kind of, sitting there waiting for when that pattern is released and released in English. So yeah, camisole number nine is pattern number eight that I'd like to knit this summer. And again, it's like once I get past the top, joining the round, it'll be so nice to just have that mindless stockinette. Project number nine is I've been, I don't know, sometimes in the summer, I just don't like wearing underwire bras and naked knits little bras I've always just thought were so precious and adorable um and I they usually suggest knit it in cashmere like 100% cashmere but that's a bit anyways I haven't prioritized like saving up for that and buying two skeins to spend $70 on a little cashmere bra but I do have a cashmere sock yarn in my stash and I'm just looking over there because it is right over there I will grab it so this Is Tinkerbell in a cashmere sock blend which is I think 70 merino 10% cashmere and 20% nylon or it's 80 merino 10% cashmere 10% nylon but regardless it is so so soft and I got this to knit my mom a Mother's Day gift and I made her a Sophie scarf um, our cat recently passed away and her name was Tinkerbell and this yarn is in the colorway Tinkerbell and I just think it's so lovely and yeah I I definitely, I love the colors, but I also 100% bought it because it's of the color being called Tinkerbell. Um, so yeah, this I'm hoping will become an everyday bra by Naked Knit, um, just to use it up. And then, yeah, we'll see kind of how far that gets me in terms of yarn, but this might go into socks afterwards as well, or I do want to start like an excavation style scrappy project to use up my, my woolly wools. Okay, 
Number 10. Number 10 is my plan is to knit the Air T by Ozetta in Holstgarn Tides. And so I, I did knit a swatch. And this is in the color Scoria, which is like this gray, but with like a tint of blue. Um, and I got gauge and it's super soft. And Rosetta knits hers in like a cotton merino blend. And so I think the cotton tides is a cotton silk. And I think that will make a really nice t-shirt that will again, like have that year round versatility. And I, I think this color will be, will be quite nice. Um, and I just, yeah, I like the fit. I love that like back panel detail in the air tee. Um, and I've been, I don't, I haven't actually knit a t-shirt before, but I think it'll have a lot of versatility, um, for summer and for, for winter. And like my Merle tee is in a plant fiber and I, I did want something in, in Merino or with, in, with some Merino or some wool in it. So had, had Scoria in stash. And so I think this will this will be a nice, a nice tee. And like these cones, like I could probably knit like two, if not three, um, summer tops out of. And so starting, going to start with the air tee and then we'll kind of see how that progresses. Um, what, what I want to knit with it afterwards. But yeah, I, I had like, <laughs> maybe I'll do like a tee roundup and a different, a different video, but I, I was going through a whole bunch of tees, um, because I do, I, I, I want like just a nice, I think oversized, boxy kind of tee I think would fit my my aesthetic well um and my style so yeah the air tee got gauge already had the 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 yarn and stash and I think it will make a nice timeless fit okay number 11 I don't have the yarn and stash but again I ordered it with this Canada Day sale going on and this is the accru tee by second knit and yeah again oversized tee I think that the I oh I also I ordered Mojave which is like a cotton linen blend in the colorway fuchsia because I was I don't know I've been like craving a hot pink garment I do have my hot pink novice cardigan which I have mixed feelings about the fit but I love the color um and like what's her name hip Naray or something like that knit Naray, hip Naray, knit hip anyways I'll put it down here but she just finished the Marseille sweater in like bright pink and I think it looks adorable and super awesome so I was like I want something bright pink and fun for like a statement piece so I, the accru tee kind of second knits like not a huge designer I kind of wanted to you know I was considering the poppy tee because uh any knits also knit the poppy tee in Mojave and it looks phenomenal um but I don't love the sleeves on the poppy tee and like the accru tee is a bit more oversized and baggy which I feel like is the look that I'm going for. Um, I also looked at T number one because it has that similar fit to it, but it's knit on a fingering weight. And I I just don't think, I mean, I don't have Mojave, but I don't think the gauge would work out. Um, but the Accru T looks like gauge will work based off of, you know, what the the Mojave yarn is and what the gauge is for the Accru T. So I think that'll be a nice, a nice knit and a nice way to like try out a different designer who's not my favorite thing is knitwear or petite knit. So, yes. Okay, second last one is, I like when High Fiber Knits posted the uh, her Vegas top, like, you know, last summer, whenever she knit it, I was like, that is such a nice, like, staple piece that I think will be really wearable. And I think it will, it's like obviously very teacher appropriate because it's like high neck, thick straps, you know, hits basically for me all the nails on the head. Um, and Paula Streak's patterns are fairly, aff like they're, they're quite affordable compared to like some, like they're for me, like in the $6 range for Canadian dollars. So most patterns are like $10. Um, not that, I mean, that's a whole other thing I could get into is like people, like sometimes I don't want to buy a pattern cause it's like $12, but it's like, well, I just spent $80 on yarn. Um, and free patterns, I've learned my lesson, free patterns mostly suck unless they're like made by like a designer as like a little hey here's my little taste tester um but yeah the vegas tea so here is my swatch so the, the reason that pearl bump is there that pearl ridge is because i i switched uh 
needle sizes just to see the difference between four millimeters and 4.5 millimeters. Um, but this is knit in a cotton merino blend. This was some yarn that I got on sale from Olives and Bananas, that yarn shop in Thunder Bay. And here it is. So I got this for $3 a skein in their like clearance table section. And it is 50% merino and 50% cotton. Um, and it's in this like awesome tangerine -y, persimmon -y color, uh, which I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to knit more neutrals because I think that they're more timeless. Um, and I think that they're great. I have like a lot of fun pants. So I think the neutrals pair great with the pants, but I also do love a bright pop of color. Not going to lie about that. So this is something I've had in my stash for a while. And like, I bought it with the intentions of knitting a, a camisole. Um, and I think the Vegas top would just be like, it would let this yarn shine and it's not going to like take away from like if I pair it with, a, I don't know, I just think like a plain bold, a plain stockinette garment in like a bold color I think is really nice for that statement and like to let the color shine and do its thing rather than, I feel like a really textured garment in a bold color can sometimes be a lot and harder to style than plain stockinette with something bold. So this is, this is the one project that I might cast on once I finish clear. I think once I finish the, the Celine top, um, I think this might be, get cast on just so I have some, some plain stockinette in the round to work on. But I, I need to remind myself not to like obsessively knit it because then I'm going to want to cast on another plain stockinette project. So this was number 12, I believe. Yes. And the last project that I want to knit is with some yarn. I had the campsite, campsite, campfire. Campside or campfire? I think campside shawl that like came out a while ago and I cast it on a while ago, like six years ago, but I frogged it last summer because I was like, I'm not really a shawl girl, but now I do want to knit a shawl again for those teaching moments where it's like really hot in one room, really cold in another room. But anyways, I have this yarn that's been in, <laughs> been in my stash since 2017, 2016, somewhere around that timeline. And it's this beautiful, yarn by Julie Aslan. And I got this at the Knit Cafe in Toronto when it used to be located on Roncesvalles because that's where I grew up. And this is a superwash merino and silk blend. And my plan with this, I think, is to knit the Tulsta Tee or the Ballerina Wrap Top. Um, and I think... I'm kind of leaning towards the Tulsta Tee just because I don't want to do all that back and forth knitting of the Ballerina Wrap Top. And I think the Tulsta Tee will be more wearable than the Ballerina Wrap Top for me and my job. So yes, that is what I'm thinking for this. But let me know what you think, Ballerina Wrap Top or Tulsta Tee. In the colorway Boreal because it has special meaning to me because I did my undergrad in Thunder Bay, which is located in the Boreal Forest. And I have an environmental, well, I have a water resource science degree for my undergrad, um, but I did a lot of, it's basically like an environmental science degree, but with a more emphasis on water, <laughs> hence water science or water resource science. But I did take this um, Canadian Forest Plant Species, which is like the, my favorite course that I've taken for like ever, every, like, all the courses I've taken, which is a lot, I've done, this is gonna be my seventh year of school. I adored that course. We got to go to nature, we got to ID plants, we got to like make these, um, basically like if you went to a museum or I forget what it's called, herbarium? No, not herbarium. Anyways, these like pressed plants that are like on sheets of paper with like the location, the scientific name, like the latitude that we found the plant, like all this information. I learned so much in that course about plants and like for succession and anyways it was amazing and so I know I know a lot about boreal species and I can ID almost any boreal species but I'm not that great at IDing plants outside of the boreal which there's not that many plants in the boreal because it's so cold but yeah this is called the boreal and I think that it would be a nice kind of tribute to to my undergrad in that that that, that class with, with Ashley who was just such an amazing prof um yeah, and like we got to go outside like three, 
we got well we had like two lectures then we got to go outside for like our labs all the time and like it was so hands-on and it was so engaging and I found it so fun and little side note but you had to remember like the Latin and the common names of every species and so I'd make Quizlet um flashcards and then every night before like my tests I'd be like in my room like my roommates would be like oh Paige must have a test tomorrow because she's in her room chanting because I'd be like okay like sugar maple acer sacrum acer sacrum acer sacrum sugar maple acer sacrum acer sacrum acer sacrum and then I'd like move to the next one um and yeah I did I did really well in that class and I found it super fun and I learned so much and it's like a fun little like flex <laughs> to be like out with friends and you'll be like walking you'll be like that's a thimbleberry you can eat that and it tastes good and they're like okay or like my friends would be like I would go on runs a trail run and I'd like ID every single plant when I lived in Thunder Bay and they'd be like okay this is cool but also like we've had enough um but yeah I think it's fun I think I totally digress I love that course and I think this this yarn reminds me of that course and I think the toasted tea will just be like a nice staple and it's raveling construction which is so easy like for me so easy to knit um because I do just love endless stock in that so yeah those are my summer 2023 knitting plans. You can comment below if you are planning to knit or what you're planning to knit in summer 2023, but that's what I'm planning to knit. And yeah, let me know what you're planning to knit. I'm excited to kind of see what other people have on their needles. Um, oh, for camisole number nine, I might do like a little make along with, not a make along, like a friend make along with uh, Julie Knits, who's a girl from, from the UK. Um, and we both have it on like our summer 2023 knitting list and I think it would kind of be fun for us to like message each other about it and like <laughs> yeah so we're we're planning to knit that I think depending on when our yarn gets in so that's it for now folks let me know if you're planning to knit any of these projects too okay take care see you next time bye